Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue our discussion of polar, uh, polar coordinates, and, and we're going to continue and talk about the topic of polar equations. So just as you've always learned in coordinates, you have your Cartesian coordinates, x and y, and you can define a function, f of x, y is equal to f of x. You take the x value, put it into a function, you get a y value, and that's called a, a regular function. Well, now we're going to talk about functions in polar coordinates, and we're going to draw some pictures. So this is going to be mainly a, just an introductory section to show you what these pictures look like and how to, how to convert uh, formats from from polar version back to rectangular and so on and so forth when you're talking about functions that have polar coordinates involved. So just as I said a minute ago, recall, so I'll just write it down here, recall, uh, this is basic stuff, what I'm going to say here, that you have y is equal to f of x, which is just some function when you have a rectangular coordinates, okay? And that function is a function of x, and that function, you know, can, can do whatever. It just looks like this, and you take a value of x in, you put it into the function, you get a value of y back, and you plot it. That's, that's what a function is, okay? So, in polar coordinates, okay, in polar coordinates, we write functions like this. We write functions as following. Instead of uh, f of x, okay, y is equal to f of x, we say that r is equal to uh, some function of theta. Okay, so you see the, the, uh, the analogy is direct here. Instead of y, the other coordinate being a function of x, we say that r, which is one of the coordinates in the polar representation, is a function of the other coordinate, theta. Okay, so basically you have the, the remember what r is, it is the distance from the origin, and the angle is just the angle, uh, you know, measured from the x-axis. So the distance from the origin is a function of the angle as you go around the xy plane here. So you're going to trace out some sort of pattern as you, as you trace your angles out. R is going to change and you're going to get some cute little figures. A lot of times they have circular uh, symmetry, but not, not always. Okay, so let's look at an example. What would a, a real polar equation look like? Okay, let's look at the polar equation of a circle because that's one that you're going you're gonna, to uh, see over and over again because one of the nice things about using polar coordinates to begin with is that they're nice when you uh, apply them to circular problems, things that involve a circle. Okay? Uh, the polar equation for a circle is, drum roll please, r is equal to, for instance, 2. This is an example. r is equal to 2. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the equation of a circle. It's extremely simple. You see, uh, what's going on here, okay? Let's go ahead and look at this and just see if we understand what's going on here, okay? Now, notice I said that uh, uh, in general, r is a function of theta. I did say that. So in general, what I'm saying is that r, as you start here and as you trace out theta, as you go all the way around the xy plane like this, okay, uh, r is going to change. It's going to be a function of theta. As you sweep theta, r might be this big, and as you increase theta, r might get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, and you trace out a function, right? Well, this very, very simple function means, see, there's no, there's no theta over here at all. It's not even here. That means that, yes, in general, r is a function of theta, but for this particular function, r is a constant. r doesn't, uh, doesn't, even, uh, doesn't even change. No matter what value of theta you pick, because there's no theta in the equation, r never changes. So what you basically have here is, and that's why it is a circle, because if you start here, uh, uh, over here at uh, uh, theta is equal to zero, as you make your way over to theta is pi over two and pi and three pi over two and then back over to two pi, you see r stays the same. It's, it's a function of theta, but it's just that it doesn't change, you see? So that is why it's, a, that's why it's an equation of a circle. And look at how simple this, this relation is, this, this uh, function is. It's very, very simple, and, and, and that's because it has circular symmetry, and that's what I was telling you before. Polar equations are really, really useful for circular symmetry. Now, Notice that the, uh, I'm going to change colors here, uh, notice that the uh, rectangular form of a circle, just to refresh your memory, the rectangular, when I say rectangular, I mean the Cartesian coordinate version, uh, version of a circle with radius 2 is uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 
r squared, so in this case it would be x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 because the radius, uh, the radius is 2 here, so you square it and make it 4. Now this is the equation in rectangular coordinates. This is what you've learned all your life is the equation of a circle centered at the origin, right? So this, uh, if you're going to plot this or work with this, is kind of ugly because if you try to solve for y, if you want to plot this thing, you've got to move x squared over here and take the square root, so you're going to have the square root of 4 minus x squared. Uh, there and then you're going to have that thing under a radical and it's plus or minus so you have one function that traces out the top part and one function that traces out the bottom part so you see it's just not very simple to work with you start taking derivatives of this thing if you if you solve for y and start trying to take a derivative it's going to be an ugly derivative it's just not very friendly to work with and that is simply because you're using a grid which is what x and y is a grid system that's what x and y is to describe a circle so it just doesn't lend itself very well to it. We've gotten used to it because this is how you're introduced to it, but it just isn't very, very nice. Now the polar representation, by its very nature, because it's based on angles and radii, okay, it is basically a circular system. So that's why the function uh, of a circle is so simple. And if you start manipulating this, taking derivatives, doing other complicated things uh, with, with functions this simple, it becomes very, very easy. And that's why it's so useful. Uh, and that's why you need to learn it. So.